Got a woman. <laughs> Who is this? Well, not you're not singing. This is gonna keep going back and forth. Who is that? Who is that? Who is that? What's on? I'm on Amazon. Amazon? Yeah. You guys. Guys. That's pretty cool. That's their band. Hey, that's a good song. So you guys, I can actually link this in the video. And I don't, I shouldn't have to do anything because it's not copyrighted. Because I have permission from I the band. I give you explicit permission. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So there's eight songs on there. There's eight songs? Mm -hmm. Name them all. An acoustic song in there. There you go. <laughs> that means I'm only in seven of them, by the way. <laughs> He's the drummer. Pretty cool. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> What's that from? The, it's, it's from the movie. <laughs> That's so exciting! I'm so, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> the camera kissed you. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed my solo on this song. <laughs> oh yeah. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll wait. Yeah, yeah, just wait for it. It's, it's, it's going to be a little bit. Is it? Not too long. That's it. I can't find a reason. What's up, Bounce? I'll just stay with the camera so it doesn't look so <laughs> shaky. Wait for it. Wait. You gotta do it with your hands. Oh, I'm good. But here it is. Good drummer. <laughs> it's supposed to be like a Jimmy Buffett song. It's supposed to be real simple. Yeah, it is. But I like it. So Jerk. <laughs> I don't have a, I don't have anything on yet. Um, but you guys, I'll link the album down below, and y'all can go check it out. Cause it's, yeah, go buy it because we worked hard on it. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Wait, they don't have to buy it. Yeah, I mean, go listen to it. But you can also buy it on iTunes. Oh, you can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can buy the digital. Okay, copies. so you can you can buy the copy on iTunes. Um, but if you have Spotify and Amazon, I think you can buy it on Amazon too if you want to already... buy it. But oh, okay. You can listen to it, like stream it, also. Okay. So those but are. But either two way, yeah. you can find it in the link below. Yeah. That's I think exciting. I think it's out on iTunes. We're gonna Sometimes show my iTunes mom like... and my aunt today. Yeah. Maybe they'll actually listen to me. Wait, what? I said maybe they'll actually listen. To what? Me, like music. I was like a joke because you said maybe they'll listen, and I said what? Because I was. Like, I wasn't even talking about you, so you weren't even referenced. <laughs> again. Whatever. Show what we got. <laughs> That's so cute. Seriously. 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 Oh, we got two here. I have to zoom in on these. Oh, little superhero things. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, she'll be working out with me in that. I mean, she'll be stronger, stronger than you soon. <laughs> so we just want to say thank you to Cheryl Hockey. I think that's last name. Hockey uh, for I sending those. It. That was really, really sweet and really nice surprise to get in in our peel box today. So thank yeah. you. It's a good one. It's a good day. <laughs> oh. 
What's up, puppies? What are y'all doing? Y'all waiting for more treats? <sighs> so, Matt's out dumping the gray in the black water. And um, if you guys didn't know how... <laughs> Brady, what do you have? Brady, bring me that shoe. Bring me the shoe. Brady, give me that shoe. Thank you. Thank you. Just put this right here. <laughs> okay, so, and if y'all don't know, um, how we handle our gray and black water here at our home base, it's, it's a process. So we are stationary here in San Marcos. So we don't hook up the trailer to go dump the black water. A lot of people will hook up the trailer. If they're camping, they'll hook up the trailer, take it to a dump site. Well, town is about 15 minutes away. So <laughs> what we have, um, luckily we're on a septic here at, at our home base. His, his parents have seven acres and they've got a septic system. And there's actually a hookup that we can take our, we call it the poop trolley. We take our poop trolley over to, so we dump the black water and the gray water into the poop trolley. And then he has to take it through the dog pen. I mean, it's a good ways to pull that thing, but he has to pull it via himself um, because it's kind of like off-road terrain. So we can't get the truck over there. So he just drags it along and then we dump it. And look, he's coming back. It's so nice of him to do, but I remember whenever he broke his leg, I had to do it a couple times. Not fun. It's not fun. Is it Brady? Stay. Having fun? It's great. <laughs> Join in on the fun. <laughs> this is the uh, the glamorous side of RV life that nobody tells you about. Well, of our specific journey. Because not everyone's true. having to do this whole thing. That's very true. Man, it's nice whenever you have those campsites that you just hook it into the ground and then open the lever, isn't it? Yep. Our lever's all the way over there. I know, I was, I was telling him. The uh, little site, the dump, dump site is right through there. That's where the septic is. One thing that I'm really going to be looking forward to with um, having our house at the home base here is uh, not having to deal with that black water anymore. Um, yeah, like I was saying, it would be real nice, you know, as far as like the campsite goes, if we stayed normally at campsites or if we, we traveled more at this time, but it's just, it is what it is. And we don't have a, you know, the, the luxury of a little hookup where you just hook up your tube to the uh the dump station and you just open the lever so any of you guys that are camping right now and have that appreciate it and so this is kind of what we're working with so you have some holes that are like you see that they're actually pretty pretty straight down it's a little jagged just because the uh the soil got a little dry and started cracking a little bit and falling apart um but you can also see it's not completely flat there's a little bit of depth right there and so we have to fill this a little bit in with rock. What I'll probably do is on all of the holes, at least put a small layer of rock and tamp it down. Uh, that's what they suggested on a lot of forums online. I went down to bedrock on all of these. Um, and so that's a pretty big deal because it actually supports. The only one is this guy right here. I could not find bedrock. So literally I just kept digging and digging. I just kept finding more of that rock that splits up. It's just that kind of composite rock. Um, I forgot the real name for it. But what I'm going to do is just almost fill this one all the way up to about a foot and a half below uh, the undisturbed soil level, which is you know, what we stand on. So what that will do is um, it'll give us that support that we need for the cement to go on. And it creates kind of like a really squared off block of cement. So that's the ultimate goal. So this is kind of an ugly hole right now until we put the, the rock in and then it looks like a, a square or a cube, not a rhombus. I just wanted to say rhombus. <laughs> so once we have that, then we can actually start putting uh, probably four posts of rebar down to be able to space out these squares. And so these will be kind of over one another. So one probably a, a foot down and then one, you know, six inches above that or so. And what that does is it keeps everything real tight as far as the uh, cement goes. Dang, what is that? You got a June bug or something? No, I wanna see this. It's like a bus, is that what you just said? It is, it's huge. You weirdo. 
That's a neat little beetle. He's cool. So this is our life right now. <laughs> I mean, I'm, you, I'm over here trying to talk tech stuff. You wouldn't you know, think that that could fly though. <laughs> here. Man. Yeah, so yeah, you put in the, the kind of jagged rock, you tamp it down to make sure it's completely flat level, and then from there you put up the rebar, and then you put the squares, do, do you see something? You're freaking out over here? <laughs> you put the squares in, and then you also put these 90 degree uh, pieces of rebar that go out from the corners, and then up through the middle, uh, and they're all spaced about six to eight inches apart from each other. Here. On that one, like it's going to go pretty here. high. Uh, that one's going to be almost like probably that high. Something like and that. Sits on top of that. Yeah, and we already did a, you know, we, did, we used a transit level and found out that that side obviously is higher than that side over here. And that's just, uh, I mean, you just have to account for that whenever you're cutting the rebar. The rebar is going to come up through here. It's going to be probably, you know, probably like right here as far as like the, the column. And so with that rebar, you also put circles of rebar um, about here, here, and here. And then you put the sauna tube over it. And then you fill the inside of, of that with concrete. Uh, we're going to do it in two pours. We're going to do the base, and then that's going to be three to four inches below undisturbed soil. And then you put cement into the sauna tube after that. And then also to make sure that everything is really just strong, we're going to be putting a big plate with two pieces of rebar down into the sauna tube, sitting on top. And that's where the, uh, down here, <laughs> that's, where, that's where the, uh, we're actually going to connect the containers. So that's the idea. And now I just have to all build them all, Six, 16 of them, is that what we're doing? And I have the rebar for about half of them right now. We're getting rock. Uh, we're at least gonna have it on site. Um, I don't know if we're gonna leave it in the truck and just keep backing the truck up to holes and pouring in, or I'll probably just end up getting a pile dumped over there and then get a wheelbarrow and disperse it from there. Uh, that's probably what I'm gonna do just cause it frees up the truck. And then, uh, yeah, and then we put the rebar post in, the squares in, and then the 90 degrees come in next, and then the circles get attached to that. And then uh, we go get sauna tubes and redo the transit level to make sure all of the numbers are correct, make sure everything's perfectly level. And then from there, it's pouring, buying containers, getting contractors out, and constructing the house. Th this is literally the hardest part, I think. Well, mainly because I'm having to do it, <laughs> rather than getting a contractor to do it. So, But yeah, there's a lot of time and a lot of there's factors a lot involved. Of a lot of little steps because you want this to be able to support a huge load. And also I looked up things on forums where it was saying per square foot of this holds up to 2,000 pounds. And then you have that dispersed between eight different holes. Uh, and your primary holes are your ex uh, exterior holes because that's where the roof is also laying. Uh, you know, it's more so on the outside wall instead of the inside wall. You know, there's just fun facts. So these are the ones holding most of the weight, but the container's 8,000 pounds max. And then uh, you also have, uh, you know, us inside of their furniture and then of course the roof really it's not going to be it's not going to be very much and so each one of these is four uh, four square feet and so it's four times the amount so it should hold eight thousand pounds per hole and i'm i'm going above so i mean really it's more like i'll say six thousand pounds per hole either way we're doing overkill on this this thing's like hurricane proof yeah and then uh yeah framing I just had a little thought as he was talking about the foundation and kind of what I've noticed. And I'm going to relate this to my work, which is uh, health and fitness. And I literally talk to my clients about this exact process. I tell everybody that the beginning stage of your fitness and health journey is your hardest part because you're setting up that foundation. And we're literally doing that right now. And it's the most frustrating and it's the slowest part. And I feel like nothing's happening, but there's all of these little components that go into this bigger transformation. Mm -hmm. And so we're setting up that foundation. And like he said, he's, he's overdoing it, trying to make sure that things go well and that it doesn't come crumbling down uh, after we get in it. And so it's like in the whole fitness journey, the setup is the most important part. And I feel like you're going to worry about that later. It's, it's not going to come crumbling down <laughs> no matter what. No, because I know that if you, you, you have might... a solid foundation then everything's fine. Yeah. But you're like, mm, my husband built it. I don't know. And then someone's going to put this little thought in your mind, like, are you sure he did that? They're going like, to send a YouTube video of like a couple that built their own house and it collapsed while no, they were in it. <laughs> I've never heard of that. I haven't either. Not, not That's for, why like, I'm joking about it. Not for it. this type of, well, okay. I'm not worried. I'm I'm just saying you will be. You're going to come back. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. If I need to worry about up. anything, yeah. this is less stable than what our house will be. That's true. That's but true. I just thought it was interesting because I'm, I'm seeing this play out before our eyes that 
how important a foundation is. And yes, it's taking a long time and it's been frustrating. And, and some days I feel like there's no progress and it's not going to happen, but you have to trust because if you're putting in the work and you're putting in the time and you're, you know, researching and putting in effort, then it will pay off. Yeah. So it's just, I don't know. You may not hit your deadlines, but you'll get, you'll see improvement by that time. And with, the health and fitness journey. Yeah. Um, you know, short term deadlines aren't always the best. <laughs> yeah. And I know we were very ambitious and I, I still don't know. I mean, who knows? Maybe a miracle can happen and we can have it done. There's still soon-ish. a chance. I, I've been talking but, to several people. There's still um, a possibility. I'm coming to terms with the fact that it might not be and everything will be okay. Yeah. So I just thought it was interesting and I would throw that out there. Um, because that's one of the things that as a coach, people get the most frustrated with the beginning because there's no quick transformation. There's no quick changes because you're putting in all of these little components and trying to get everything right and fine tuning all these little things. But six, 12 months down the road, you've set up such a solid foundation that that thing is not going anywhere. So anyway, let that encourage you guys. Yeah. If you're building a house or if you're building your body. Solid foundation rather than <laughs> quick fixes, right? Exactly. Yeah. Cause those That's tend it. to fade. Yes. So. They're not uh, sustainable. So, right. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. that's that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned. We should have another one out on Saturday, hopefully. More footing updates, stuff that he's got planned for the week. Yep. Okay. So a lot of stuff happening this week. All fixated within that little tiny hole. So it's not that fun to watch, but watch it anyways. But we're documenting it. <laughs> yeah, it's a really big <laughs> deal. So it's like getting this all set up and then ready to go. As soon as we start pouring, that is a lot of commitment there. Yeah. So That'll be fun, though. That'll be fun. Because we're, we're yeah, doing... Yeah, fun for you. We're doing more. You're just watching it'll me do it. It'll be fun to see and to film. Yeah, it'll be fun to do that. Okay, sure. that's it for today's video. Make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you're new for more container home and RV life and life and wandering and dog updates. And wow. baby updates. We have a baby, too. It's very, very broad channel, though. Here we are. Yes, well, it is. <laughs> either way, have fun out there, guys. <laughs> Bye, guys. I get to. I can't see. <laughs> I can't tell what is going on. <laughs> here, go stand back there. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna stand right here. You're like right in the middle of the frame, or what? Mm-hmm. Scoot over just slightly right there. Sure. It's better than that. Now I just need to find this it's without moving recording. it. Oh, it is. Yeah.